our day to you, God, Lord, working and taking care of kids and just being busy, Lord God. We want to come right now into your presence, and we want to hear your voice, God. We want to hear your voice. God, I pray tonight, God, for James, Lord, strength over his body, and as he speaks, God, that our ears will be open, God, that we want to hear the voice of our shepherd more than anything, God, more than anything, God, that we know confusion and different voices are not of you. So to truly hear from you. So refresh your people tonight. We lift our hands up, God, and we say, here we are. Here we are. Holy Spirit, we want to learn of you, God. You are our teacher. You are our guide. And so we just thank you tonight for who you are, for you are always so good and faithful. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. amen. Sweet. Sweet. How y'all doing tonight? I'm going to cheat because I'm a worshiper. Uh, Jim, will you give me a water out that back room there? Uh, I'm going to cheat. Everybody sit down to your feet. Yep, come on, stand to your feet. Uh, you may not be able to hear me. Uh, Steve, can I have the white mic? Pardon, please. This is always the fun stuff of busy days. Anybody had a busy day today? My day's been wild. It's been fun. We got a lot going on. Let's close your eyes for a minute. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jamie. Sweet, sweet. All right. Uh, Steve, you can turn those effects on when I sing because it helps. And all the saints and angels bow before your throne. And all No. sing it because you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory Let's sing, you're worthy, you are worthy of it all, you are worthy of, oh, for from you. Come on, let's sing it again. You're worthy. You are worthy of it. Come on, lift your voice. You're worthy. You are worthy of Oh, for from you are all. To you are. You deserve. Now, come on, lift your hands all over this room and do it. Just give it to him. Come on. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're so worthy, Jesus. Oh, come on, set your heart. Come on, set your heart tonight. Come on, set your heart on him. Come on, set your affection on him in this moment. We love you. Come on, sing, you're worthy, you're worthy of it all.
for from you are all to you you deserve we glorify we glorify everybody do me a favor and just take a big deep breath in just thing you guys have no idea that you just worship Jesus every breath you breathe is a worship when you inhale yeah when you exhale way every breath that you breathe every breath you breathe is a word is a worship is an act of worship I, I think it's amazing how how people get in certain situations and it's this thing of just take a deep breath. Like if you feel like you're having a panic, a panic attack or you're getting ready to, what they have you do? Focus on your what? Breathing. Ain't that amazing? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Michael, you can hang out up here with me. Well, y'all give it up for Michael tonight. He's amazing. Sweet. How's everybody doing tonight? Y'all good? Blessed, highly favored of the Lord. Y'all don't mind if I, like, treat this like a Sunday night when I'm talking to students, do you? Okay, because if you do, you'll get over yourself. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that may have come off way salty. I'm sorry, Debbie. Was that salty? Was that? Thank you, Debbie. I'm a, if Debbie gives me an amen, I'm good. Amen. Everybody say God first. Come on, everybody say God first. Um, tonight we are going to talk about the voice of God and the value of hearing God's voice first. Uh, we started out this series by saying, Seek ye first, Matthew 6:33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things uh, will be added unto you. You have to understand that what you seek first organizes every, everything else. You got a lot of people that are seeking freedom without seeking the, the one who gives freedom. You got a lot of people that are seeking things that, that, that if I could just get more money, come on, I'm talking to myself right now, and if I could just make more money, if I could just do a little bit more, like, and so what you don't realize is when you put that above everything else, whatever you set at the top organizes every other thought. So we wanted to give you guys tools for um, what it looks like today um, when it comes to uh, living a God first life, it's not just because it's January. Uh, well, it's now February. Who had a good Valentine's Day this week? Who 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 enjoyed Valentine's Day? Yes, Lord, Hallelujah. Who who slept in on Valentine's Day? That's who who wanted to sleep in on Valentine's Day. There we go. I felt. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for your honesty. I saw that. Um, anyway, but we wanted we wanted like like this is the thing that. I believe the church is missing today, not just Kings River, but a lot of churches. We're, miss, we're missing the discipleship aspect. And what I mean by that is we're missing the people walking with people. Like, this is a cool setting, but I need you guys to understand Jesus didn't do discipleship like this. Anybody like The Chosen, the, 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 the series? If you have not watched The Chosen, I promise you, you will see Jesus in a new light. Season three, I am Peter. I just, after watching, after watching season three, the conclusion of it, I am Peter. Okay, I, I am Peter. Like Peter cussed and he, no, I'm joking anyway. So it's a joke. You can laugh in church. But, but, so tonight we're going to talk about the voice of God. Um, and it was funny because um, today I, I text Susie and I said, hey, I, I'm supposed to be talking about hearing God tonight. I said, but the truth of the matter is I've got nothing. <laughs> and that's really weird for preachers to say. Uh, can I get an amen from the preachers in the room? 
Uh, like, it's really weird to say, man, I've got nothing. Um, uh, Leonard Ravenhill, a uh, phenomenal guy, guy who wrote the book, Why Revival Terries, um, uh, he, he, he said that he had a lady who showed up every week, and he would, she would ask him, she would ask him, now, Pastor Leonard, are, are we going to hear from you today, or are we going to hear from God? Now, you got to understand, Leonard Ravenhill was a very integral person. So one Sunday she shows up and she says, hey, um, are you going to hear, are we going to hear from God or are we going to hear from you? And, uh, and he said, I cannot lie to you. He said, I have been so busy this week. I have not spent time with God. You are going to hear from Leonard today. And she left. And she came back the next week and asked the same question. Are we going to hear from God today or are we going to hear from Leonard? And he said, I spent time with Jesus this week and she stayed. Uh, pretty interesting, right? Like, you ain't got old school saints like that no more. It's like, oh, we'll just endure this. No, huh? Back in the day, they'd be like, no, bro, nah. So anyway, so tonight, uh, so, so she said, she said, you're busy. Uh, we got these new chickens and ducks and all this mess at my house. Um, and, and a chicken coop um, that I'm trying to get my money back on because false advertisement. Um, and it builds my character. Uh, and I tell them when I act out that I go to Maranatha. Like, I tell them my name's Joey McCutcheon. Uh, no, I'm joking. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. I love you, Joey. I love Maranatha. I love Pastor Darren and that crew. Uh, but if you're ever out with me, am I lying, Katie? Am I lying? No, I'm not. Um, I tell them when I'm, acting, when I'm acting out, it's like, I go to Maranatha Fellowship 2019, Canal Terrace. My name's Joey McCutcheon. I sing everything. Um, <laughs> It's a joke. Anyway, man, I'm tired tonight. Y'all give me grace. Um, so, um, so, uh, so I went home, um, and she's like, just come sit out by the chickens with me. And I'm like, okay. Like, she was on her lunch break, and I'm like, okay. And so I, I got my axe, and I've got a fire, firewood that I'm, you know, chopping the season for next year. And so I just started chopping wood, and in my head I may have seen one or two chickens there, but we'll just roll on. But I'm chopping the wood, and she's like, babe, that's not what I told you to do. And I'm like, I know, but this is relaxing. So, um, so then I went and sat by the river, uh, because sometimes you got to get out of the norm. Sometimes you got to get out of the norm to really hear God. Um, and so, uh, so I got some notes here. Uh, if you got a smartphone, a uh, notepad, something, I would encourage you to take these uh, scriptures out the, and, and go home and read over them. Like, take good notes tonight, because y'all do realize nerds rule the world. Can I get an amen for my note takers? Like, nerds rule the world. Um, so, uh, anyway, so... First things first, um, I want to understand and I want to get just the, just the basics of everything out the way. Okay, you ready? You ready? You ready for this? The God we serve speaks. If you're trying to figure out like what my first point is, bam, there it is. <laughs> the God we serve is not deaf and he's not dumb. My kids, my, I was driving to school, my, my kids at school, and Emery said, man, that's dumb. And I said, what? And he said, this person said this, and they were being dumb. I said, Emery, now, you don't sound really intelligent right now. He's like, why, Dad? I said, because you said that the person talking was dumb. He's like, what do you mean? I said, dumb means you cannot speak. So they, they are speaking. So, so son, like, be more intelligent if you're going to insult somebody. Don't, don't, I'm joking. It's a joke. It's a joke. But, but, but we don't serve a God who can't hear and we don't serve a God who can't speak. Um, because the, if we served a God who, who we had to prop up and, and who we had to, 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 to do certain things to get him to speak and get him to act and get him to move, he's no longer God. We become God because we have to do something to get him to exist and do something. Uh, but that's not the God we serve. So the God we serve speaks. Everybody say speaks. And so uh, I'm going to go real quick to... Uh, Genesis. Everybody say Genesis. Okay. I love, I love it. And I'm going to just kind of just call out some different verses. Um, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So this is really cool. We have a setup. Nothing's happening. It's dark, void, empty. Right? Right? Chaotic. Can I get an Amen. Um, and so, 
I like verse 3 because verse 3 says it this way. Then God said, hold on, wait a second. The very first thing that we actually see God doing is speaking. Speaking. Then God said, let there be light. Let's go down. You can write this down. Uh, Still in chapter 1, verse 6. Then God said, let there be. Verse 9. Then God said, let. Verse 11. Then God said. Verse 14. Then God said. Verse 20. Then God said. Verse 24. Then God said. Verse 26. Then God said. Uh. Bible is being fun. Then verse 29, and God said. Then you go to chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, and the Lord God commanded them, saying. Verse 18, chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said. Verse 21, and the Lord God caused. Now, now you got to understand, that right there gives us a foundation that God likes to talk. That also gives us in, insight into what happens, some of the things that happen when God speaks. We see the creativity in God to, when he speaks. Every person sitting in this room was a thought in the mind of God before you ever existed. And then God said, let there be Debbie, let there be Trina, let there be Michael, let there be, uh, 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 man, I just had a brain fart. Uh, Let there be Nancy. There we go. Um, And then God said, so you have to understand that you are a word that God spoke into existence. And when God spoke you into existence, he put something inside of you that he does, which is create. You got to understand something, the power of your words. We frame our world by the words we speak. That's something that God placed inside of us that he himself does. That's one way that we get to reflect our father is God said, God created with words. And so with us, he helps us create with words. Behold, I set before you today life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. Right? Right? Okay, so Psalms chapter 33, verse 6. I'm just building a foundation. I promise we're going somewhere because people are like, yeah, I know all this. I know that you know all this, but I need you to hear this. Okay? Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. Psalms 33, 9, for he spoke, everybody say he speaks, and it came to be, he commanded, and he commanded it and it stood firm. Romans 4, 17, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not yet exist. So we see that this happened in Genesis. Uh, uh, everything that, that he said did not exist before he said it. Um, so what is the language of God? I've said this time and time again. What is the language of God? The language of God is reality. What does that mean, James? That means if he says it, it has to happen. So you got to understand God's not flippant with his words. No word that God has ever spoken is wasted. It's always, see, I'm not that guy. Sometimes I say things, anybody ever open mouth, insert foot, put a little hot sauce on it? Am I the only one? And the rest of y'all lying. If y'all don't raise your hand, we're going to have an altar call here in just a minute for you, okay? Come to Jesus because you're lying. All liars have their place in the lake of fire. Um, and so, and so, I'm sorry. That was probably really harsh. Welcome to Sunday night, flow night. So, so you have... So you have to understand that God doesn't use words flippantly. He, he's very intentional in what he says. 
because he knows the power of a spoken word. So when God speaks, he speaks reality. Like for me, if I say car, in, in your mind, you think of a vehicle outside, maybe your vehicle, maybe a Maserati, Bugatti. Can I get an amen for some, some car lovers? Give me some old Ford, Ford dudes. Who's, where's my old Ford dudes, my old Chevy guys? This, you know, was it 76 or something like that? I don't know much about cars. I do know that they build my character sometimes. Um, uh, but but when, when I say it, it becomes an idea or an image in your mind. But when God says car, car shows up. When I say peace, there's ideas about what peace could be. When God says, let there be peace, I love it when, when the winds and the waves was acting out and they were acting stupid in the storm. When Jesus was, was told the disciples to go to the other side after he fed the 5,000, the winds and the waves were going nuts. They were going crazy. I like the way, I think it's the King James. I, sometimes I like, like, like that version because it just makes me sound so intelligent. Um, the winds and the waves were going contrary to the boat. That made me feel real smart. Contrary is like a 12-point scrabble word, I guess. I don't know. But, but, but Jesus looks out and he says, peace be still. And what happens? It has to stop. Why? Because the living word has now expressed something into the situation that wasn't there before. So when God speaks, uh, God, it, it, it's a reality. So uh, uh, so, uh, let's go over to Hebrews real quick. Hebrews. Everybody say Hebrews. To every woman who brews coffee, you breaking something. Because he, come on, come on, somebody go with me. Did, did anybody else get that? Anybody else get that? That's like he's coming in a Honda because they were all in one accord. <laughs> right? Right? I need to quit. All the comedians out of work, and I'm trying to be one tonight. Hebrews chapter 1. Like I said, I, I got this today, and so that's why I'm kind of all over the place right now with this. Hebrews chapter 1, okay? We're going to pick up at verse 1. What's the language of God? How does God speak? God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. Everybody say by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. So God speaks to us through Jesus. It's, it's not, I, I know we like to say Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, depending on what your upbringing was. Or I grew up, it was Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen from somebody? I, I, I knew I was going to get an amen from Patty. I knew, Rob, you grew up Church of God. We know it was the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. But, but, you have to, but you have to understand something. The Bible refers to Jesus as the Word. John 1, I love the, the Gospel of John. John is one of my favorite gospel, Gospels because John... Uh, John is the only one who, when he writes about himself in his story, doesn't write it from the standpoint of, of uh, John. He never calls himself by his name in his gospel. John always calls himself by the way Jesus identified him. John, the beloved, the one who Jesus loved. If you want to know where to read it, just, just read the book of John. Read the gospel of John, and you will find that he always refers to himself as, well, the one who, who Jesus loved. I think all the other disciples were like, ah, really? Come on, bro. You trying to play favorites? Like, you know. Uh, but, 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 but John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. Now, remember, we just read Genesis 1, Correct. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, you got to understand, out of the four Gospels, John's Gospel wasn't written for about 40 years after the other three had already been composed. 
Okay, so John came along, and there's a possibility that he read the other Gospels. He read the other stories, and John said, yeah, they left this out. This is really, really important. This is so, Because the other ones start with the, the birth of Christ or, or the announcement, or, or Mark, Mark is my homie because Mark was the Cliff Notes dude who's thankful for Cliff Notes in school. Glory to God, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for friends that read Cliff Notes that I can cheat off of because they were smart. I said what I said. Uh, don't, if you're watching this online, don't cheat, okay? If you're teenagers, don't be cheating in school. Cheaters, I can't say never prosper because, well, anyway, so, uh, uh, sorry, Trina, I just, saw, I just saw that. I'm digging a hole. Yep. So many jokes running through my head. Roll on, James. So, so in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So, so Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that the Father, that God now speaks to us through Jesus. So the lens of you hearing the voice of God has to come through Jesus. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Here's why. Because he's the exact expression of the father in the earth i'm thankful for for genesis exodus leviticus numbers i'm thankful for the prophets i'm thankful for job job was my homie uh like i mean it was really cool i'm thankful for all those guys but jesus said if you want to know how the father wants to express himself you cannot look through any other lens than, than me because jesus is exactly what the father wanted to say about himself does that make sense? Why is this so important? Because here's the thing. It affects your approach to hearing the voice of God. If I've been good, if I've read 35 chapters today and, and prayed for an hour and, and done all, checked off the check boxes, God's going, God's going to talk to me. God's going, no, no, no. I love it that, that I don't have to be perfect to hear from him. I don't have to have it all together to, to, be, to, to be able to hear from him. And so, and so Hebrews, Hebrews tells us that he speaks to us th th through Jesus. Now, uh, let's jump over. Where I know you guys are like, what are you doing, James? I, I believe it's Luke 8, cause Luke 8 is where I'm wanting to go. That's Acts. That's too far. What time is it? They don't have a, I don't have a clock in here, and I'm in trouble for that. Oh, okay. All right, sweet. All right, so we'll be done by like 10. It's a joke. It's a joke. Just if you check out before I get done, I'm okay with that. All right. What would you say, Debbie? Oh, somebody said something. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. See, this is the issue with Wednesday nights. Like, I can hear you, and I engage with people. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, I'm one of those audience participation type of dudes. So, um, so anyway, so Luke chapter 8, verse 4. Now, this is, this, is where, this is where it's going to get fun, and we'll get into some details about actually hearing God. I just wanted to build a case for the fact that God speaks. We serve God, Yahweh, who speaks, who communicates with us. Because there's a lot of people that wrestle with the fact that it's like, I, have, I, don't, I don't hear God. Maybe you don't hear him because you're not listening. Luke chapter 8, verse 9. Nope, nope, sorry. Let's go up to verse 5. Still chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, verse 5. Did I say verse 4 earlier? I'm sorry, y'all. I'll pick up at verse 4 because it's not very much, okay? Y'all just give, give a brother some grace. Sheesh. And when a great multitude had gathered, they came, they had come to him from every city. He spoke by a parable. I love this. So you have the living word speaking words. I like that. That's, that's really cool. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trampled down. 
and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with, with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he, said that, when he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I love it. But what he's saying there when he says here is not the way we think he's saying here. Anybody ever had to do anything called active listening? Active listening where where you where because you can we can be in conversation. I'm guilty of this. Susie, if you're watching, if you're in the building, I'm sorry. There have been a time or two or twelve. That we have been in conversation, and she's like, da 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 da. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh, really? Uh, really? Uh huh. Yep. Then she'll look and say, What I just say? See, what had happened was <laughs> you was talking, and I was hearing wah wah, wah wah, wah wah. Thank you, Charlie Brown. Am I the only married man in this room that's ever done that? Can I get a, can I get some help from some Steve? Uh, help, help me, help Steve. Pray for me. Pray for me, Keith. Keith, don't no, don't put your hand up. She's sitting next to you. Stop. Oh, she already hit you. She already hit you. So 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 when we see the word here, we're thinking, okay, we're just okay. Just gotta hear. Did you know you can hear stuff and not listen? Jesus is saying, hey, listen, the ones who are actually listening, actively listening to what I'm saying, there'll be fruit. I love it because 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 I believe I believe this is just James's. I know people are like, yeah, this is just my, my personal belief. I believe if Jesus was walking the earth today in our day and age, he would be a film producer. Okay, let me explain. When Jesus is talking to the Jews of this day, they were an agriculture group. So he would speak parables so they could get it. I think Jesus would be the number one movie producer today if he was walking the face of the earth. Because, come on, who watches Netflix? Who watches YouTube? Who watches Hulu? Who watches movies, period? I believe, because there are certain things that I believe he wants us to get. So, verse 9. Chapter 8, verse 9. Then his disciples asked him, saying, what does this parable mean? I love the disciples. I love the disciples. Because they like, listen, we know you was talking, and they didn't get it. Like, you ever been in a conversation with somebody, and it's just like a group of people, and somebody's talking, and you're like, everybody's like, mm-hmm, yep, they're actively listening. And you're like, mm-mm, I don't get it. Me, no, mm-mm, nope. I don't understand. That's, that's what the disciples were doing. They were like, hey, listen, like, it's cool. We heard every, to him who has an ear to hear, let him hear. That, that's cool, Jesus, but you don't understand. I know there's something deeper to, the, to what you're really trying to say. And I'm not satisfied with surface stuff anymore. There are people sitting in this room, people who are watching online, who are struggling because they're like, I am so sick of surface stuff. Where is the place where I can jump in and not touch the bottom? Where is that at? So, so chapter 8, Luke 8. We're going to pick up verse 9. Then his disciples asked him, saying, what does this parable mean? And he said, to you, 
it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Don't overcomplicate it and miss the kingdom. Seek first the, help me again, seek first the, right. So he's expressing and exposing them to what kingdom looks like. But to the rest it's given in parables that seeing, and he's quoting Isaiah here, Seeing, they may, may not see, and hearing, they may not understand. So, so, so there's the hearing thing. Like, like we want to hear God because we want to understand, but what do you do in the moments where he tells you to do something that just don't make sense? Hey, James, you are in a land of opportunity called Dallas, Texas making more money than you have ever made in your life. You got a white wife, three black kids, two Hispanic kids. We were the minority where we lived. It was amazing. I want you to take that dynamic and move back to West Virginia. God, this don't make sense. You didn't lost your Do you understand? This is Dallas. Dallas. Like I and, and this is the this is the thing that I realized. I'm saying Dallas, Texas right now, and you guys are like, oh, that's no, no, no. We lived in what was known as the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Just think like 12 million people. Huge. Like and God's like, I want you to take your family. I don't even, like, at this point, I don't know what's going on at Kings River. I don't know what's going on in West Virginia because I hadn't really been looking. At this point, it's like, now you want us to, like, now? Like, this? I don't, like, I had some bad, bad uh, barbacoa or something yesterday. I had some bad barbecue from Meet You Anywhere, like it wasn't good or something. God, you're not really telling me to take my family right now. Now, if I, now I would have been happy like waiting another four or five years to move back. God, this don't make sense. None. What do you do in those moments when you hear him say something and it's like, hmm. So anyway, so, so I didn't understand, but I had to trust. Everybody say trust. So now he explains the parable. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. I know this is really weird, what I'm about to say, and I hope it makes sense. There's responsibility when he gives you seed. Not trying to be vulgar or nasty in any way, okay? But I'm going to say something. You ready? The same way the seed of a man impregnates a woman is the same way his seed gets into our hearts. And when a woman gets pregnant, everything changes. Can I get an amen from any women who have been pregnant? I don't know what that's like. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a man. I appreciate you for that, Jesus. Thank you. And so, and so the seed is the, the word. So, so, so the seed gets planted. But the devil comes and takes the word out of their hearts. But the one, the ones on the rock are those who, when they heard, received the word with joy. Oh, this is great. The honeymoon phase. This is amazing. Like, we receive it with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, 
and then the time of temptation fall away. Anybody ever been in a season where it's like, uh, I know, God, you said this, uh, but this is hard right now. I know you said it. And it was easier said than done. I know you said it, but this is hard. So temptation, when temptation comes, it, they fall away. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they heard it, go, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. Distractions. These are, these are all things that hinder us from hearing God. Distractions. Cares of this world. Riches, pleasures of life. It's fun when you start to walk close enough to God where, where he begins to say crazy things like this. Hey, um, will you let me have a say in what entertains you? I know everybody's watching it, and it's fun. it really is funny. Like, they're laughing. But will, will, you, will you let me have a say-so in what entertains you? Those are words that he speaks that we don't like to hear. And it chokes out what he's really trying to do in us. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So James, what are you saying? I'm saying I believe God speaks more than we're listening. What are, how, how does God speak? Well, the number one he, way he speaks is through his word. Okay? If, if, you ain't, if you ain't reading scripture, and hear me, there have been times where I have read a passage of scripture just to check it off my box, and it did nothing in my heart. Just because I was... I was trying to do the right thing, you know? But it got choked out. Why? Because I didn't set time for it. So, so how do we position ourselves to hear God? Like right now in this room, there is possibility uh, Elvis Presley playing right now. Right, right, right now there is, there is uh, possibly... Uh, 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 Bruno Mars playing in this room right now. There's possibly Hillsong playing in this room right now. Through the radio waves, radio frequencies. The only reason why we're not hearing it is because we're not tuned into it. We don't have our antenna set to it. What if that's the way it is with God? Like, we don't, can I be honest with you? We're busy. But I want to say something to you. Don't get so busy working for God that you forget God. If what you're doing is impacting your ability to take time to pause and to stop and to hear God, you may need to readjust your calendar. Oftentimes, when we want to hear from God, it's based on a situation. God, I need to know what to do. I need you to tell me where to go. Do I take this job? Do I not take this job? Do I turn left here or do I turn right? Do I go home the way I've always gone? Or is there an accident waiting to happen? Or, or, or my kids are going crazy. God, I need you to talk to me for this. And I need you to talk to me about that. When's the last time you just went to him and said, let's just talk? Like, what do you got to say? Anybody ever had a friend? Don't look at me. Anybody ever had a friend that it seems like they do all the talking in the relationship? 
Linda, don't look at Danny. That's bad. Don't do that. Don't. That's marriage counseling waiting to happen. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. But it's a joke. It's a joke. But but you got the friend, and, and you're in a conversation, and they're doing all the talking, and then they walk away, and it's like, oh, that felt really good. And you're like, okay, my turn. Like, my turn. What, like, 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 what if we do that with God? Because we don't commune with him. Now, I have Michael play uh, up here, not for y'all's sake. Michael is a, a, he's a psalmist. He's not just a piano player. Calvin Boucher, he, he's a psalmist. He is, he is somebody, who, these are guys who can sit at this thing and shift the atmosphere of a room by just what comes through their fingers through that piano. Because I can sit and play the same thing and the same thing does not happen. I get frustrated sometimes because I got stuff. Can I get an amen from any musicians in the room? It ain't right. You got some people that it's like they just sit down and it's like that right there, that right there. They, they can do that. And then you sit down and you try to do the same thing. And it's like, uh, okay, Jesus, I, I guess it's a different anointing. I'll take a different anointing. But you don't usually have Michael sitting in your bedroom. That would be weird for a lot of y'all. You don't usually have Michael sitting in your bedroom with a Nord, with a piano with some strings under it playing. And you're like, hmm? go ahead, play Michael. Just play some. Hmm. You don't usually have that. And if he's sitting in your room while you, like, in bed or something, we need to have a conversation because somebody's going to get fought. Can I get an amen from the Neal family? Can I get an amen? Like, somebody's going to get their, somebody's head's going to roll. Uh, I'm sorry, that was a really, I love you, Michael. Thank you. Michael Neal, not Jackson. Michael Neal. So, uh, uh, so, so, you don't usually have this. So, James, how do I position myself to hear God? How do, I, how do I do this? First off, don't approach him with preconceived ideas. Anybody ever had a conversation with somebody without having the conversation with them, and then you have the conversation with them, and you're ticked off because in your head they've already responded this way, this way, this way, and this way, and, and you didn't even talk to them yet? And they're like, why in the world are you, like, upset? Well, because in my head I had this conversation with you, and I said this, and you said this, and I said this back to you, and you said, and it's like, no, mm -mm, no, never happened. Oftentimes we come to God with our preconceived ideas. Uh, I would encourage you and, and, and even challenge you just one day. Set a timer, 15 minutes. Set a timer for 15 minutes. And don't come to God with anything. Don't be like, I need you, I need this, I need this, I need... No, no, just, just come in and be like, hey, Papa, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, there's lots of things that I would like to say and lots of questions that I have. But more importantly than me trying to come to you for just a genie in a bottle, I want to come to you because you're my father and you want to have conversation with me. The reason why we don't like silence is because we actually have to deal with our thoughts. The reason why there always has to be something going on is because we do not like being left alone with our thoughts. And God is like, I am not wanting to tell you if, to, if you should take this job or that job. I'm wanting to tell you who you are and who I am in you. So that way, no matter which job you take, you won't miss it. But we don't have time for that because it's like, I need to know if the market's going to crash or if this is going to happen. No, no, God's like, I don't care what you do. I just need you to know who you are. A lot of times the, the, the questions that we have, God's not answering us, not because he's trying to be a jerk or not because he doesn't have the answer. It's because we're asking the wrong questions. 
He's trying to tell us, we're asking him to tell us what, and he's trying to tell us who. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Do I buy this house? Do I not buy this house? Do I, do I invest here? Do I not? And God's like, you're not going to miss it if you realize who you are. That's why whether I was working, I, 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 can I be vulnerable? What time is it? I'm sorry, I don't have a clock. What time is it? 7.53. All right, I'm going to try and get done before 8. Help me, Jesus. I, I'm going to be very open and vulnerable with you guys, okay? Because that's just how I know how to be. Um, so we moved back here to West Virginia, and I started working at Panera Bread. Panera Bread basically created a job for me. And so, uh, because, because I worked in a corporate setting in Dallas, all the Panera Breads here are franchised. That's why it frustrates me that I can go to the Panera Bread in Taze Valley and then drive up the road and go to Barbersville and things look different. Because it's a franchise. When you're on the corporate side, that's a no-go. So they created a job for me. So, so, so. I had stepped out of ministry in this aspect because truth of the matter is, I was tired. I'm 38. I've done some sort of full-time ministry like this since I was 15. There are people who know me from Maranatha as tea bear I was at Maranatha, I was, at, I volunteered more than some of the staffers worked, right? I, I got a witness. I, 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 I volunteered, like my days off when I was in high school, guess what I was doing? I was volunteering. Everything I did was done. All my friends were really surrounded by church. So I've done this most of my life in some sort of fashion where this is where I got my resources to support my family. And so situations happen and I just got tired. I always have to tell people, I did not have an affair. Me and my wife did not cheat on each other. It just got to the point where I was gone so much that there were things that began to happen in our house. And my wife's like, babe, Where's your head? And the place that I was, I, I'm very thankful. We, we, we helped plan a church. We helped start a church. But when you're planning a church and you're starting a church, it all really falls on a few. It is true. 20% of the church will do what 80% won't do. It really is the 80-20 rule. Now, I've seen it to where I've, I've been, been a part of ministries where like 65% of what was going on was happening because 65% of the people, it wasn't 20, it was 65% of the people being involved, being, I've seen it. And so like I was going, I would do, I would work full, uh, full time, then I'd go to meetings after, then after I would, uh, uh, like I'd drop the kids off at school in the morning and not get home till like 10 o'clock because I would do some sort of marriage counseling, some sort of parenting uh, things. So I was busy. And I just got to the point where I was like, you know what, I, I need a break. Like brother just needs a break. So we moved to Dallas. I did not have a job. We moved to Dallas, Texas, because I felt like I heard God say, I want you in a healthy environment for what I have for you to do. This is when he's speaking, I'm listening. I want you to take your family and I want you to go to Dallas, Texas. When we moved to Dallas, Texas, I did not have a job. I, Dallas is where I found out that I could have stayed there and Ubered and made lots of money just Ubering. Amazing. My wife hated it, though. 
And so we get to Dallas, and I am in a season where God is like, I did not bring you to this church to give you more head knowledge. I brought you to this place because I want you and your family whole. Healthiest church I've ever been a part of is Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas. Robert Morris. Phenomenal. Did they have junk? Oh, yeah. When you got 50,000 people showing up a weekend, you're going to have some junk. But we got there, and we, we did small groups, and we did all the freedom ministry that they had, and, and, and we did, like, we, we just, like, do you realize that I was able to just go to church? I got, to, I got to drop my kids off with my wife and go enjoy service. And guess what? We left early. But while I'm at Gateway, while we're in this place, God's like, I'm preparing you. I, I, I need you guys to become healthy. I need you guys to, to, to be, because the places that I am sending you, you need to bring what I am instilling in you. And I'm like, God, I don't want to leave. West Virginia? Really? Really? Stepping into a time machine. Like, let me me explain. Let me explain what I mean. In Dallas, where we lived, I could order something from Amazon at 6 o'clock in the morning. And by 930 that morning, it was at my front door. West Virginia, Amazon? (laughs) Roll on. We'll just roll on. West Virginia, Amazon's is different. Just different. But God's like, I need you to go back. I need you to take your family back. I'm like, God, I don't want to take my family back because it's like stepping into a time machine. Like, I never had to explain to my kids when we were in Dallas and San Marcos, I never had to explain to my kids what certain vulgar words were that they were called when they moved back here. Like, really? Never. Like, my kids would come home and say, Dad, did you know that this happened? And in in black history and all this? And I'm like, what? Wait a second, you're, you're having to learn this stuff at school? Because nobody's saying it to you. No, huh? It's like, what? So we move back, and, and I'm wrestling with God. And I'm not going to lie. I'm wrestling with God right now. My life over the past month has not been easy. Hearing God, hearing God. Yesterday was Tuesday, right? Okay, sorry, I'm getting my days mixed up. Yesterday was Tuesday, Valentine's Day. I came to the church. I got here. I dropped my kids off at school, and I got here at like 8 o'clock, I think it was. And I just went in my office, and I'm like, God, I'm just, I'm struggling right now. And I opened my Bible to Job, chapter 1. And I'm reading how there's this conversation with God and Satan. And God's like, have you considered my servant Job? And I'm like, dude, that's a jerk move. (laughs) Am I the only one who's ever thought like that? Am I the only one who's ever thought, God, like, what are you doing, bruh? but I needed to hear from him. And so I opened it up and I'm reading it. And he said, read it again. And I'm like, no, because I do not want to be Job. No, Job was not cool. I want to be more like Jesus. Job went through hell. And he's like, read it again. And I read it again. Have you considered my servant Job? And I'm like, 
I don't want you and Satan having a conversation about James right now. Like, my name's James, not Job. Have you considered my servant Job? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm tired of reading that. No, there is no reason that I should even be thinking that you're, you're saying anything along the lines of, have you considered my servant James? No, uh-uh. He said, no, you're missing it. I said, what am I missing? Read it one more time. Okay. And he said, Have you considered my servant? He said, James, Job was mine. That's how he knew he was going to make it through it because God had already said in his heart, Job is mine. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, God, I don't, I don't want to read into the text. I don't. He said, James, you are mine. I have settled it. You have settled it. We are in what's called agreement. I am your God. You are my person. Wrestling, wrestling. God, this is. So how do I position my heart? I get quiet. Sometimes you got to shut some stuff off. Even, even sometimes you just got to take the, the mush that, that's going on in your brain and say, God, I've got this, this, and this on my brain, and I'm really wanting to focus on you, but this, this, and this is what's going on. And he'll say things like, we'll deal with it. Just come here. It really is that simple. Hearing God isn't hard at all. The world doesn't have to stop spinning on its axis for you to hear God. I don't have to go off in tongues for 35 minutes and then, booyah, somebody stands up and it's like, hey, this is what he did. No, no, no. I think that's cool. And I think there's a time and place for that. But sometimes God wants to speak directly to you. Because you are mine. Last thing, I was sitting, uh, when, when I lived in San Marcos, we had prayer every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Friday nights, we actually had a midnight prayer meeting. Those were amazing. Um, but we would, uh, we would, you know, go in the sanctuary and as a staff and we'd, you know, pray and intercede and we'd walk around chairs and things like that. Well, one day I went in and I was just by myself um, and I turned the lights off had music like this playing, lights were off, and I'm sitting there. And I've never audibly heard God's voice. There may be some people in here who are like, I've done that. James has not. But I'm sitting there, and, and I'm kind of in this crazy season again. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'm like, God, I want to know what you think of me. Not the youth pastor. Not the worship leader. Not Susie's husband. Like, I want to know what you think of me. How do you see me? And it was cool. Because I felt a finger. I'll fight you over it too. I can't explain it. You ever had somebody like poke you in your chest? I felt a finger go right here. And this is what it said. You are mine.
Don't just limit him to this. Start here. But he can communicate with you on whatever frequency it is that you're on. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a listening exercise, not a hearing exercise, a listening exercise. Okay? I'm going to have Michael just play. And that might mean that you may need to sit up or lean over, whatever you need to do to get comfortable. But I want you to simply ask these words and don't do it out loud. Ask these words. Father, what are you saying to me in this moment? Go for it. Hey, Steve, will you reach back there and stop the recording for me?